received it in, in May just to look it over. Um, certainly the board will have any opportunity that wants to make changes in that. Um, um, well, no, I guess you wouldn't. <laughs> um, the, um, it's due in the, 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 the county auditor's office on July 15th. They'll approve it the end of August and then you'll adopt it uh, as, as approved by the state auditor or the county auditor in September. So no changes since May. Good evening. Uh, my name is Jeremy Lane. Uh, thank you for allowing me a few moments. Um, I'm the EMS coordinator and liaison uh, at the Atrium Medical Center. Uh, and, and the purpose of coming out tonight was just so um, that everyone here could understand. Uh, we've started a new program. Uh, it's called Take Action for Your Part. Uh, it's a public education campaign uh, to increase uh, the public's awareness and ability to uh, be properly treated for heart attacks and other cardiac events. When we came up with this, we really wanted um, some EMS partners to be a part of our uh, public education program, I reached out to Chief Edward and uh, we discussed, uh, you know, making sure that everyone's on board with good public education. And and really all I want to do is uh, say thank you uh, to Clear Creek Fire, Chief Edward, and a firefighter paramedic Wilson, if you'd come up this way real quick. Um, and, and just thank you for the partnership and, and, and the public education. It's a very positive thing. I want to make sure you guys are aware that the fire department is doing wonderful things for public education as well. So. Um, just a presentation for um, uh, both the firefighters involved as well as one for the uh, fire department um, and hopefully to start uh, jumpstart your modeling uh, right. uh, career hopefully <laughs> as well. But uh, that's all I really have. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you, Thank you, Thank you. Thank you for your time. Appreciate it. Have a great evening. Smith and his road crew 
and now Matt Clark have been very reactive and sympathetic, and we appreciate that. We now feel it's time to be proactive. Recently, we've received documents from neighbors that go back 10 to 15 years, unfortunately, on this issue. Recently, it was finally acknowledged that the piping at Pekin and Bell Terrace is undersized and will be replaced and doubled. We very much appreciate this, but myself, neighbors, and other professionals who examine the area feel this is only half uh, solving the solution. Had this been a one-time issue, uh, no issue would be brought up today. But this has occurred time after time and is worsening. Most recently, twice in one month. And we have suffered thousands in loss of landscaping, property damage, labor, and now due to lack of action, it has destroyed our driveway, all which take a back seat to the safety endangerment of our children, township residents, and visitors. Usually people see this after the fact in our residents in our neighborhood. What we have is hopefully a one minute video and several pictures in real time so that you guys know what's been going on in real time. Keep in mind this is one minute. We have had three years of this and need your help. So if you could. Is the jump drive coming up? Is the jump drive coming up? Part of it is the, the picture presentation, but uh, most recently I had about six personnel out to my home last week, uh, and I'm kind of jumping ahead, but Jason Fisher, Chuck Petty from uh, Warren County were both on site with us working, and part of the presentation, but I'll go ahead and tell you Jason's words, is his words are do anything you need to do to get this corrected, no permit is needed. So he understands the problem on getting this solved. And we've got a couple of solutions we feel like that can easily be added uh, when they're changing the piping system down at uh, Pekin and Bell Terrace. They're going to put a Y down there, two pipes the same size, but we feel like if it's not doubled up at the mouth, which is where our property is, it's still going to be an issue. I can't get it. I've got it on my phone to do it. Okay, okay. great. that he needed to put a meeting deadline to be able to make it tonight um, anyway so he engaged three different contractors two of which responded to him one I think frankly it's kind of surprising that they did in fact and even more business in the township um, it might just be Mr. Hall's there we go I'm sorry mm -hmm. well, came up good. Okay, good. this is my yard 
this most recent one was, do you remember the date, Dan? Uh, just a couple weeks ago. Couple weeks heavy ago. Rain. It, Monday when we had four 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 it, it had just happened uh, literally four weeks ahead of that. Uh, yeah. Scott and his crew were out helping us out then as well. And, and if I may interject, I'm, I'm Dan Worley, his neighbor. This is my yard on the right side. And you can see how high the water is. And not only do we get water damage, we get all the debris that comes in from the fields, the farmer's fences that fall apart. We get bob wire in our yard. It renders our yard useless for a week till we get it all cleaned out. Insects just increase. Uh, I'm peeking for both of you guys. The mud was sweeping across the street. That, and you guys, that's a very well used route for emergency vehicles. If you guys would hit the mud, been over with. Did you find the pictures as well? So you found the video. Um, as Dan said, he actually filmed that trying to exit our subdivision and could not exit. He didn't feel safe. So he sat as close as he could to our home, went back to their home, and basically were trapped. So we also have some uh, standard photos. This is a normal, I'm oh, sorry, go back to the first one. Just quick, this is a normal picture of how we keep our home and very proud of our home and subdivision. Second one. This is our driveway after just one event. And just for, he's, this, this picture on the left is facing Pekin? Yes. Correct. Okay. If okay. you're the, so you're, if, if you pull into into Bell Terrace. Yes. You're the first house on the left. Correct. And then you tend to pull your list. Yeah, right, I'm right next door to you. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So. I'm just trying to get my yeah. bearings here. We'll see it in a, in a, another picture, but if you look straight down there, there's a stop sign down there. Right. That is yeah. actually yeah. halfway covered up the stop sign at this point. So. And this is, is this not the, the beginning of uh, Bull Run, the watershed? Is Come that not where that started? No. Yeah. Bull Run. Uh oh. Uh, there, there we go. Line. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> this is uh, okay. That may feed into it, but this there's this is the music place issue. Okay. I think because you're you by the crow fly, you're from music place. Yeah, you're correct. That's the same watershed. Okay. Correct. And uh, this is a picture actually of, from our neighbor across the street. Uh, it's really hard to see, but you can see the stop sign in the first right. picture halfway covered. So back to what I was writing, it's from the neighbor's yard, look at the car on the right. If you can imagine this going on at night, or worse, a school bus full of children uh, being transported through here. My neighbors were trapped, no re-entry or exit for emergency vehicles. On the right of that car is actually a gulch. And as we know, we've already had an incident of hydroplaning, similar embankment uh, in this township. Uh, this is not, unfortunately not an acceptable situation. As Dan stated, under this water is also mud and silt, literally turning this road into an ice rink. One of my neighbors actually spoke to me on the last incident. He drives a four by four truck. He felt like he was gonna fly through that intersection and go across the road when this occurred. Before the last incident, I tried to do my part. This is the, uh, it would, had been clogged and a mess, but this was actually a French drain that runs along my driveway to kind of help keep things out. Uh, it was packed with mud, rock. I spent weeks digging this all out along with Lisa. We put this back in, and if you go to the next picture. Well, there's a lot of sand in the next picture. Right, a lot of it washed, as you can see, to the end. This was three days after we completed this job in our yard. You can see how thick the mud is as well. It was literally a quarter and a half inch thick that we were digging out. And the French drain was once again destroyed and we had worked weeks and just completed it. This is what happened most recently to my driveway. And like I said, we honestly feel had this been addressed a year, two years ago, five years ago, we, 
we're suffering property damage that should not have happened at this point. Okay, next picture. We're hoping this can be resolved. Uh, speaking with Scott Smith, there's also a, a plan or already a plan uh, implemented to where they are gonna take two pipes across um, Pekin Road at Bell Terrace. But everybody I've talked to, myself, engineers, feel like there needs to also be a double pipe up under my driveway as well. So we've come up with two scenarios. Speaking with the engineers, both have already been pre-approved to add to this job. If you guys are willing to do that <coughs> and resolve this, this would be one. And actually, the dots aren't perfect, but you would move that other 36 inch to the right of that. And so now you would have double piping up there as well under the driveway. The second scenario that the engineers offered is to move back into my yard and come across in the trench. It's hard to see from that, but there's the drainage trenches up there and start it and again kind of create a Y situation, run the piping through that area and connect it to the trench. So either way, you're going to have a double 36 inch pipe up at that mouth of the problem. We feel like this could easily be added to the current work agenda. We're asking that when the township installs the piping at the street, they also implement one of these two options into the plan to solve this issue and not just band-aid it, and in a timely manner to lessen and further any chance of injury or damage. Lastly, I'd like to say, you know, I want to stay in this community and I want to protect my family and my property. But even more important to us is the safety and peace of all Clear Creek Township residents and the visitors as well. We have a couple letters we'd like to submit to the township as well from some neighbors that unfortunately could not attend. And then I do have some other neighbors that I believe may want to speak on the same subject, if that's all right. I don't know who would I give the letters to. So, Just last year, Mr. Moody brought them over the, the farm behind it. Is that, is that the Millers? Of Roy Miller and then actually Miller. the city of Franklin. When, was they, the do, one beyond that. when they do corn, you know, they don't mm -hmm. plow up the yard with the fields anymore. It's just, you know, they just cut it down. Well, we had every corn stalk from that whole field in my yard and in his yard, and it blocked up the drain. And I've got a, a bridge that weighs about 600 pounds. It picked the bridge up and took it and put it in his yard. Yeah, that was definitely an incident there caused by blockage. I think, Mr. Muttersfall, you even stopped by my yeah. house with your wife. Thank you again to check on us. What we found since then, and I've met with Roy Miller. He has been very good about cleaning that area. And actually, he planted some crops at the time that were not causing that issue. We are definitely having a water flow issue. Yeah and it's increasing and some people are actually wondering is something been changed in the topography or drainage up on the fields that Franklin also owns. We don't know. There's definitely more water coming down out of that field than yeah. we've seen. Um, Many years. It, yeah, and uh, you know, we've had some historic rains, but yeah. um, I've been there 10 years um, and much, I haven't seen. Obviously much worse. Than you know, <clears throat> time, it just seems like now it's just you have a one or two or three inch rain, he's getting flooded. Or I'm, I live up the hill, but I'm the one that was in the truck that came down the hill and slid in the mud. If I hadn't seen it, I would have went all the way across Pekin and ended up, you know, in the in the ravine. But um, it, it's a safety issue. I, I really believe it's a safety issue and needs to be addressed. Can you state your name and address for records, please? Sure. Eldon Neal, 4346 Bell Terrace. 
And you know, on this planet, this has been going on. It's been going on. I've been there 20 years, okay. and it's every year it's flooded. It's just it's been there. People have looked at it and looked it's at it. It's progressively worse. It's you know, progressively worse. Yeah. All right. Well, I we think certainly. <coughs> Just so you know, I'm willing to sign a, 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 a writ of variance if you guys need access to my property or anything like that. I'm open to getting this solved, obviously, for my yeah. community as well as ourselves, whatever it takes. No, we appreciate that, too, and uh, certainly we'll get out there as soon as Scott gets back and get on this and I'm sure get something done. Follow up you know, we, we have to watch that. Um, um, we're going to town tour here. We have to watch spending money on private property. However, when that issue <coughs> affects our township road, mm -hmm. I think we have every right to spend money on your property. Thank you. That. That's correct. Okay. Thanks. Now, Thanks. On the, the line that will be going under your driveway, yes, what sir. will be collecting the water to get it to go through that line? What will be collecting? Yeah, what, that's a very bad, it's, it's not a good picture. I don't know if anybody else has any more pictures, but it, there's actually a huge drainage over that side at the very back of that arrow that comes down and kind of makes an L and it goes on down. So they're talking about right there, putting that pipe down into that drainage hole and coming across, or part of that wall could be cut out right there. If you cut out the wall to the right of that, you could easily leave a portion of that wall in securing the current pipe and put the 36 inch right on the right side of it, you know, contour that a little bit where it exits, and then you're good to go. Right. I just want to make sure where it is collecting that water, it's not going to be able to collect a person. Well, I can tell you now, down at uh, Pekin and Bell Terrace, if a child were to fall in there, mm -hmm. they're gone. Yeah. I mean, it's literally like the rapids on those days. And I know uh, they're not here today, but my neighbor across the street actually called the police the last incident <coughs> because of the cars coming through it, and they got out there as soon as they could and shut the road down. That's it. Well, we appreciate you all coming in. Thank you for listening. I appreciate it. And you guys can keep that jump out as you need it to review. <laughs> Thank you all very much for your time. Thank you. Thank you. I have some uh, I have some photographs here I'd like to submit. Sure. Okay, first, uh, if you would state your name. Your My name is John Rouse. I go by Jack. Everybody knows me by Jack. I live at 7173 Red Lion Five Points, which is the first house on the right past Kepler Park. And uh, I've lived there for 30 plus years. My wife has lived in that house for 54 years. Uh, I want to present arguments to lower the speed limit on Red Line and Five Points Road. <coughs> and uh, I have some photographs here that I'd like to show you. This is kind of why. Suggesting down through that part to yeah. lower or the whole thing? And I would like to thank you all for putting the stop sign at Red Line and Five Points and, and Lower Spring Grove Road. That was a tremendous savings. We have uh, um, this one here. Okay, each one of these photographs, I'm standing in my driveway. 
when I take this photograph. Okay, I've got another one here. There's, there's just two young girls on the way to school on a rainy morning. Terry, Terry Dalton got them out of their car through the back window. This is standing in my driveway. Um, this is the same car right here. And most of the Clear Creek police uh, probably know me on a first name basis because I call in and say there's a wreck there on Red Line 5. They know exactly where to come. This one <clears throat> is two weeks old. Two weeks ago. I'm standing in my driveway. And it's a real, I can't even get to my mailbox. I'm, I'm not a speaker, so I really don't know. It's the first time I've ever done this. But, uh, you got two, uh, that stretch, the accidents always happen coming south. Mm -hmm. And they go around that curve, and they just can't make it. They're going too fast. And when it rains, there's a little bit of gravel that comes out, washes out of that park, and gets on the road, and they slip a little bit, and they're gone. You know, we've had them almost in our bedroom. And um, that speed limit is 45, but there is a caution speed limit of 30 miles an hour, but nobody pays any attention to the truck. Now that is the only section between 73 and Lower Springfield Road that's 45. Even the new section across the bridge, where, where uh, the old Springfield Nursery, that's 35 on that brand new road. And, uh, there's so many kids in and out of that park, and, and that park, it should be 35. I'll even take 25. But we have so many young drivers. Terry and Ruth Dalton have replaced numerous mailboxes. Dr. Beals lives right across the road. He's already replaced three this summer. Three this summer. And uh, the young drivers, they just, uh, you know, if the sign says 45, we got to go 45. You know, we don't have sense enough to slow down and go around the curve. I am hoping that the fire department don't have to come to my house or my front yard and take me out from underneath the car because I was mowing my grass. And my neighbors all have the same concern. There's one guy with a red Corvette. And I'd kind of like to have you guys around when, when, on a Saturday morning when he comes by. We have two or three guys on crotch rockets. You know what them are. When they go around that curve going north, the pedals are scraping on the road. That's how, I don't know how fast they're going, but they're moving out. Uh, I had to invest, put a large investment in my driveway to make a turnaround because there is absolutely no way we can back out of our driveway. We have to turn around and drive out. And, and, it, and it's urban sprawl. Uh, I mean, my wife lived at Red Line Five Points at 73. Red Line Five Points was a dirt road. She was nine years old, but I'm not going to tell you how old she was. You're but a wise man. <laughs> Public <laughs> but, record, yeah. But, uh, but any, anyway, uh, that's a long time. And the road is very narrow there, and I know it costs millions of dollars to straighten the road. That's the answer. But, but the, the nutshell is lower the speed limit. That'll save a lot of money, and you know, will it stop all this stuff? I, I don't know, but it's a, it's a good step. Right. It's a good step, okay. and uh, uh, that's that's all I have. Okay. Well, we, Matt, uh, we're still thinking of what kind of legislation we have to do to do that. We'll probably have to get the county out of the budget. Yeah, yeah. that be done. But that doesn't take forever. Uh, we'll get on it. Jack, I I'm sure I speak for all four of us. I would totally agree. I you, you know, you I, said, you, you can, you've been in my house. Yep, absolutely. And the issue has gotten bigger and bigger over the years because of the, the amount of travel that they get at school time. The because tremendous all, traffic increase yeah, from urban from. They all, all the people that live on the north side of town that drive to school come down RL5 or Crosley, and they come straight down by I'm old school. So. When, when I went to high school, we weren't allowed to drive. We had to ride the bus, even the senior year. Now everybody drives. Uh, it's a dangerous, dangerous curve for sure. And, uh, I know all my neighbors will surely appreciate it. Let's get the ball rolling on All right, thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank Can you. I ask a question? Yes, sir. Uh, I'm sure Dalton, I did, but Jack. Come on up and so we can. Uh, all for the record, Mr. Dalton. Uh, I have a 
What's we have called the, the, like the state. Oh, uh, Terry Alton. I live on the red light platform. I live gas. And we called the state. And the state says, well, it's not our problem. It's not a state road. So we call the county. The county says, it's not our problem. We need to call the state. And now, well, now we're at the township. Okay. Well, we don't know who to talk to or who to get what done. I mean, it's become a speed zone through here. Especially with the kids, you know, okay. you know, going back and forth to school, and there's uh, like, there's like five of these little sports cars, and they run in a group, and they come down through there. I mean, they're flying, and if there's anyone there, they're going to kill somebody. Yep. So, you want to quickly explain the process, how this works? We, Matt, you can or well, Ryan, either way. Yeah. So, because there's no <coughs> talking about the spot from Lytle Five Points north of here across 73 to Lower Springboro, that section of Funnel Hill. And if you look at Crossland, right, to our, um, to our left, um, that's 35 miles an hour. There are 38 houses along that on both sides of the road as it leaves down the red line. And then you go up the hill, there's a few houses <coughs> And there are, then there is the um, Stone Ridge, the Woods, new subdivision over there. There's 200 homes in there. Um, there's also, when you cross 73, you have Stone Ridge, the views, and then um, you have the Valley View Road there, and there's uh, another few hundred homes there. So 
That's 250 some odd home, uh, homes, um, homeowners, uh, people. So don't hold me to the exact number. That's not perfect, but um, it's, it's a relative perspective that I'm trying to establish. In contrast, right? So Bunnell Hill from Lytle Five Points, Cross 73, Lower Springville has 60 homes. Much, much more than cost. It's 50 miles. It has four major residential areas now that we now have in our township. Uh, one of those is um, Patton. Uh, it's uh, an older established um, street there. A hundred homes are somewhere back there. We have Shadow Lake now. It's about 25 or 30 homes there. We have the new Country Brook established. There's 50 homes there now. Very, very large homes and there's more under construction. That'll be a hundred plus uh, area there. Then we have Meadowview Court. There's 50 some odd homes there. Then um, we have um, uh, all things uh, a school bus stop now at Bakley. And that, that's new since I know I've, I've been here. So we have school children, right? 50 miles an hour down that hill. You cannot see when you're coming over there until you recognize the bus and you're already behind it. And then there's my area, which is the six homes on South Creek right off of Bunnell Hill. And I have to count the six before I leave my neighborhood because it's a blind spot up there. There's several blind spots around here. So what I understand is that these particular roads and speed limits were set decades ago, back in the 50s and the 60s, right? When things were not the same as it is today. You don't have the volume and they're based on a formula, accidents, you all were saying it before, the geometry of the road, the number of curb cuts, the volume, and there's an 85% quartile speed uh, part of the formula uh, uh, calculation. So what I'm asking for is a speed study to go through this and get this lowered to 35 miles an hour, which would be appropriate in my view. So that was my, that's my request. I would tell you too, one when we do the speed study, they'll tell us what we can take it from. Yes. It's obsolete in my view. It's based on a long time ago, and things are a lot different. Oh, sure. So I appreciate you uh, oh, sure. listening to us. Oh, we appreciate you coming in. Thank, Thank you. Very much. Anybody else have any comments? Okay. Let's move on to new business under administration. We have <coughs> resolution 5033, a resolution declaring personal property a surplus and approving internet, uh, approving an internet option, direct sale.
issues with siren boxes, they, they don't match the new technology of the light bars, you know, it's which is progressive technology, so that stuff gets outdated so it no longer operates that light bar you're putting on. So but we tr uh, when, when we look at a, a car build, uh, the gentleman from uh, PAR comes in and, and he and Officer Bates sits down and they go through piece by piece. What can we move over? What, people, what, what can we not move over? And what do we have to now look at for new? So that's, that's where we do it. That's what's left over. So. Okay. Um, and I don't know if it's appropriate to want to wait till next time, but I've been having that check signer on my desk for the last two years that we have not used that probably should go through uh, gundeals.com too, which is unfortunate. It's a $25,000 check signer. But the technology's changed so that we won't use that anymore. So um, I don't know if it's too late to get it on this go round or if you'd rather wait. I'd rather wait. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And, you know, um, does it have any use to anybody now? Or? It signs checks. So instead of uh, instead of doing a uh, supplemental appropriation, we just feel that the, given the dollar figure uh, that's being moved in between light items in the road and bridge fund, uh, we felt it more appropriate to just simply reallocate five thousand dollars from uh, one fund to another. So I would ask the board to consider that if they have any questions about it. Chief, and just for added information, the reason we're having to do this is um, I decided not to blanket any of the three thirty three sixty fund because I wanted to save it for the highway. And so I was taking money out of the three nine that Scott wanted to take out of that fund. And I was taking out of three ninety. So the reason there oh. is a not a surplus or a, there is a because I didn't give Scott the opportunity to take it out of that fund. So that's why we're having to do that. Gotcha. Okay, any questions about thirty fifty excuse me, fifty thirty four? Okay, so a motion to approve 5034. So moved. Second. Mr. Mearsbach? Yay. Mr. Gabbard? Yay. Mr. Wade? Yay. And we have 5035, a resolution declaring that maintenance of the following list of properties constitutes a nuisance. We have six of those items that appear to be uh, as soon as grass and weeds in the same subdivision of non developed houses, correct? Yeah. The vacant lots, they are split between a tree line, so they're affecting both uh, Vicky Lane and Pekin Road. Um, so, I mean, they'll go in and bush hog the properties in their entirety, and but, uh, we have more individuals impacted. But yes, the, the first six, they are repeat offenders. Yeah, just right. Right. Okay. And then the seventh one is a new one. I know, hard to believe that uh, we just have a regular weed nuisance with Brown, okay. but we do. Right. Anybody have any questions about 30, excuse me, 5035? Okay. Uh, hearing none, there's a motion to approve. So moved. Second. Mr. Gabbard? Yay. Mr. Mearsbach? Yay. Mr. Wade? Yay. 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 And we have a request to enter into a contract for website design posting from Legend Webworks. Yeah, Legend Webworks. Works is actually a company that uh, I'm familiar with working with from my days in Deerfield. They're actually located in Deerfield Township. Um, I listed a number of very close area clients that they have in this area as well. Not the least of which is the Springboro Chamber of Commerce. Uh, I'm sure that uh, uh, they can attest to the ease of the end user to be able to uh, update information, keep it fresh, uh, that sort of thing. Legend's price point was very, very close to what um, IT recommendation was, not, not recommendation, but IT's options. They had their uh, friend do it. And I think his friend was 
probably going to have more of a solid and just saying, yeah, it can be just for you if you need it on the cheap. But uh, Legend's pretty well practiced in, in web hosting as well as web design. Um, they've got it down to the science. So I was hoping to be able to get approval tonight, assemble a team to be able to work on the layout and the design um, of the website from existing personnel, people who are. I, I see there are uh, information in here, if I'm not picking up a price, I see. Uh, 3000 Yeah, 3000 is the estimated. Uh, and then $75 for reoccurring monthly. Correct. Okay. Anybody have any questions about that? I think it's uh, time. Small well, number two. Yeah. I'd be happy to serve on that team if you'd like input from me. I would. Okay. Is there a motion to enter into this contract with web design and hosting to Second. Mr. Mearstall? Yay. Mr. Gabbard? Yay. Mr. Wade? Yay. And now we have a request to enter into a contract for copying, printing, scanning services with ComDoc. So prior to my getting here, um, support staff had been working on engaging vendors because of uh, leases for the copiers, both of the fire stations as well as administration here. Uh, we'll be coming to an end later this year and early next year, respectively. Um, and we engaged a couple of different vendors, one of which was our existing vendor, Woodhull. Uh, another one was a prior vendor that we worked with in years past, Comdoc. Uh, both of them put forward proposals that were evaluated by uh, staff. And at my request, um, I asked staff to formulate a recommendation for us to look at. Laid them down, compared all things, price included, um, as well as um, you know the other soft things that you really can't speak to, like how quick do they get out here when you give them a call, that kind of stuff. So um, laying them side by side, we brought forward the recommendation uh, that we switch vendors to Comdoc, uh, not the least of which was we're going to save us. Uh, Yeah. It's going to save us about $196 a month immediately. Um, but if you look at them versus what we have currently, it's going to be about $300 a month, $3,600 annually. So uh, either either way, if we went with Woodhull or we went with Comdoc, um, we would be saving money on a per click basis just because the machine ages. The price per click increases annually. <coughs> Well, we have to revisit again as the lease gets longer and increased. Yeah, but it's one of those things. Can I ask a question? What, what made you decide to do a lease? We, we have found that it's more cost effective to, to purchase. So I'm just curious what, what the thought process is with leasing. I don't disagree, and that was my question too. Why do we lease? Um, but leasing lets you get the, the useful lifespan of the machine, according to the industry standards, from what I've understood, is about ten. They'll tell you about four years, but in all actuality, it's six to seven years. Okay. So when the capital outlay is that high to actually buy it, um, it could be argued that you could recoup your money in the term of the lease or maybe a little bit shorter than that. But you do have to enter into a maintenance contract regardless of whether you buy a machine or not. And they'll often charge higher prices for a maintenance agreement to get you older in your seat if they don't get the get your financial to lease it, so there's pros and cons on either side for leasing versus buying. Uh, Pete, what do you think? I mean, you did this for a career. Yeah. I, was, I, was, I was thinking we were going to lean on you tonight. I did. I'd like to look at the numbers. I, you know, I got the uh, agenda Friday and uh, didn't really look up until this weekend. So I'd, I'd like to look at it for a little bit uh, unless there's a, a deadline that we have to. Mark. No, I had a question just as far as like, I, I think that asked where does the service come out of. You know, if we had them in the past, you know, how long ago was that? And you know, how close are we if, if they're from Akron, Ohio, and we got a business in Clear Creek? Uh, you know, I'd, I'd kind of like to look at everything before I, I vote on them. Yeah, I, I think that's a good idea. But when 
Oh, it's Booley. State your name. Is there Mark, before you get started, Steve, I did actually have a few answers. For oh, okay. Yeah. Blue Ash is where their technician and their dispatch from. Okay. The down in Cincinnati area. I, I asked Mark in a discussion with him earlier after he and I spoke. They do have a number of public sector clients, Miami University, Kansas City, Warren County, City of Carlisle, Monroe, Franklin. Actually, the Warren County is in Woodlawn. Do you think? We, we have a little bit uh, of equipment in there as well. A little bit, yeah. But Just a little bit, yeah. Most of the time, it's a ton of work. We're, we're trying to tap back in, especially with the sheriff's department right now. Um, we're doing a lot of our management services in there right now, doing an evaluation to see if we can help cut some of their costs. So, yeah. My name is Mark Watson. I work with Comdoc. Okay. Yeah, we are based out of Blue Ash, but we also have a local office right here in Dayton. Um, our um, customer care center is in Akron but that is strictly for any kind of service call. So there's a little 1-800 number right on the front. If you call that, you will get somebody in Akron. So it's a live person straight out of Akron. Um, about 4,000 calls a month are actually solved. About 98% of the calls are solved on the first call right over the phone, which is great. Um, so it, it frees up our technicians, which is great to be able to keep them on those, those type of calls that really need a technician present to fix or replace any kind of the, the equipment. Um, but yeah, I, I have some of those numbers if you'd like to look at some of that. Um, I have all the numbers and, and the proposal itself, as Matt was saying, Matt's correct, was saying is um, their, their biggest month, their, their monthly cost right now is at 1190 but after doing a, an apples for apples type equipment evaluation, I was able to get a, a little bit faster machine. They're actually doing a 45 per, per, uh, page per minute and a 30 page per minute device is what they're proposing. Um, I can get you all two 45 page per minute devices um, with a nice finisher on the end of it to do the whole punching and everything, which I talked to Savannah and Diane, they, they requested that, um, and still save you about $300 per month. So it's going to be about $18,000 savings over the five year term if you all work the lease. Um, if you wanted to do a, if you wanted me to propose some kind of numbers for a purchase, that'd be fine. I could definitely do that as well. Um, but that, to me, I mean, um, as far as the the service and stuff like that, that seemed like it was one of your biggest concerns. Our, it's about 3.6 hours is our standard service time to get somebody out here, but all of our techs are actually dispatched before 8 a.m. in order to get um, to those accounts very quickly. So if you need any kind of service or anything, that's why I love our customer care center so much is because you call that 1-800 number. If they can't fix it over the phone, they can order your parts without transferring you to anybody. Um, and they can also order or they can dispatch a technician to you over the phone too. So by far our service team is definitely um, very, very uh, much one of our differentiators for Comdoc. So, okay. And I have all that information. So if you need to District, we have a request to purchase EMS patient care equipment. Sure, this is a piggyback on our last request for uh, grant purchase. This is going to be purchased from the EMS grant fund, University of Pennsylvania, Ohio. This is to, to go with the ballistic vest and helmets that we got to do the patient care equipment that might be carrying the bags uh, to do the treatment if we would respond to a, an active assault type situation. That's the one about it. We Yeah, here it is. It's the two sheets in front of that. You don't have that? I don't have that. Here, here, you can have mine. Here, you need to wait. My fault. I'm sorry. I can't close them up. Yeah. <laughs> 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 <laughs
Step four, 2981, step five, 3092, and uh, be effective on uh, July 1st. So, okay. uh, it's a contractual issue, and I'd ask the board just to approve that. Uh, is there a motion to approve Ryan Roach's step increase? So moved. Second. Mr. Mayor, Yay. Mr. Gabbard? Yay. Mr. Wade? Yay. And we have police officer uniform shirts demonstration. Get Wally to wear the high heels and walk, and walk, walk the catwalk, so I'm going to have to be stuck with the show until you're all right. Take your shirt off. Get it Get it over with. Uh, last year, we reset the, the police department's uh, pants. Uh, this is my 10th year. We have not bought pants other than piecemeal for 10 years. So the board uh, allowed us to uh, purchase the officers that last year. And this year, we had scheduled them to buy shirts. Uh, I'm not asking you to spend that tonight, but I want to show you. There's some new technology out. Some of the departments are going to it. Uh, we wear the shirt with the vest underneath of it. Uh, you can't take that vest off. So on a hot day, you sit in that sweat all day. And if you've ever had a vest on with uh, on a hot day, it just stays in there all day long. Uh, the new systems allow it's a water wicking shirt underneath. And they allow the vest to go on outside, uh, and I uh, carry it. It looks a lot like a shirt, so it kind of blends in. The officers ask that uh, they be allowed to uh, look at that and see if there is a possibility to change to that. Uh, it doesn't come in French blue. Uh, French blue appears to be getting phased out on a lot of things. I know there's some agencies that Middletown and Hamilton Township have already switched away because they don't believe they can get any longer. Corey was sure you talked to. I'm not sure what the, where that stands. Uh, so there's a lighter blue and a dark blue. And the officers ask that uh, they be allowed to consider the dark blue original colors of the police department to go back to that. So the systems look like this. Uh, 
the vests that we wear, the bulletproof vests we wear, come in a, a carrier. And when they started this system, it required you to take those panels out and put them inside the carrier. That voided the warranty for the bullet resistant vest. Uh, so I, did, I had not looked at these in the past because there was no solution to that. Because I didn't want to get uh, a chance that, God forbid, one of our officers get shot, that we had violated their warranty by removing that. This system actually allows that carrier to be placed inside another carrier, which is this version. So this is the Walter Wicking shirt. We had a mock up that looked like us, and this is the lighter colored blue. So the question would be is can we look at this system? And if we can, um, does the board have a color issue with either one? And what I'd like to do is if you say okay, is stick a couple guys in it, let them wear it for a while before we invest the money, make sure they're happy with it, and then I can come back to the board and report at that time. Yeah, this is kind of where we're at, and, and um, we'd like to go ahead and, and roll it out for probably the fall long sleeve shirt. So, do you have an objection to us looking at this system? And do you have an objection to uh, the change of color to dark blue, is what they're asking. You know, I think the officer's input on that color is uh, much more important to me than my input. Uh, it's, it's not offensive unless it's, you know, yellow or something. I, I'm perfectly, <laughs> liquor, perfectly, <laughs> perfectly happy. I like the, I like the dark blue better personally. So. Um, but isn't that like Rembrandt? That's the only thing I can think of. Are we going to look just like Rembrandt? Please? Believe me, I had to sit and think about this a long time. Yeah. I, I wanted to stay separate in some fashion, but uh, there's not this color, so I got to either go lighter or darker. Well, the other one is very very similar to what we have right now, and I'm, right. I'm just my thought was, is it going to be hot because it's dark and. More than anything, I it's on. my issue with spring yeah. When you have that vest hot. on, it's yeah. hot. Yeah, it's hot's hot. uh, already flown too. This allows them to actually take it off of their office, in the office, and let themselves dry out somewhere. The only problem they have with this is at a distance, the water wicking shirt almost has a dirty look to it. Uh, uh, when you're standing at a distance. And they were like, eh, I don't know. Uh, if you're wearing that by itself in some fashion. You're right, so. yeah, I mean, the guys be able to see what they want. You know, tactically, yeah, tactically, policemen like dark, mm -hmm. okay. uh, just because there's less things shining and less things is visible. But uh, uh, it is. I won't show all these ice cream stains either, so that's good. The dark <laughs> color. There is that plus, yes, sir. Um, no, I think uh, that's, obviously the officer should, if that's what they want. I think it, they're going to look good in either, but I like the darker as well, and. I love the idea of them being able to take the vest off because I know that's my brother-in-law, who's an officer, talks about. And, and to your point, Linda, it doesn't matter what else you've got on; if you get that vest on, it's hot. I mean, there, back in the old days, you used to take a uh, hose off a vacuum cleaner, tape it to one of your air vents in your car, stick it down your shirt between cars wow. to try to cool yourself so off. Yeah. But on a hot day, it's, it's well, even it's, in here, it's often have to get oh, the yeah. vest from there. Yeah, that, that'd be great for the old day long. I'd say investigate it, get some guys to try it out, and we'd get a good survey and, and bring it back to us and let us know what they think. Thank you guys for reading. Thank you. Yeah. Let's do that. I'm curious, what do the shirts cost? They're, Round number. They're uh, 50 something, I think. Oh, okay. so it's like a, they're all about that price. Okay. Uh, the carrier is a little bit more expensive because of what it is. It's a secondary vest carrier, so I think they're maybe not. We You're looking buy. like $150 for our officer? Uh, well, we, we try to buy five days worth, not oh. not five carriers. We would look at oh. probably five shirts and maybe two carriers so they could do a wash day. Oh, okay. Uh, kind of thing. So that's five days. Yeah. yeah.
frightened you to try to come out on this. You're very interested in the car. So I just want to let you know that I wanted to thank you for what you tried to do before. Uh, it helped when the police was in the driveway. <laughs> but when he was gone, uh, you know, five minutes after they were gone, uh, I think they.